It's another Spike Studio production. Welcome to another Consult in Your Pocket webcast. This one on what's new in Domino 852 administration. This one is brought to you by GSX, your leader in remote monitoring and alerting systems for everything from Domino to same time, Bez servers, Exchange, LDAP, web pages. Listen to Steve Beischer and GSX for the first couple minutes of the webcast, tell you all about it, and then sit back as you learn about all the new features they included for Domino 852 administrators. So as you can see, it's a big list. Some of these are only one or two slides because it's you know minor, but management replicas, we're going to talk a lot about uh, the new diagnostic probe and the detecting corrupt databases. I kind of gave it a long one and a short one back and forth down the list. So let's talk about the biggest feature I think everyone wants to get their hands on, the managed mail replicas. Currently, you know, we give local users replicas and tell them, here, set it up. It could be huge. We don't have any control out of size. We don't have any control on corruption. Uh, basically, we have a policy that says push it once down to the users. The help desk isn't ready for this uh, to recreate all the time. So 852 is required to implement this on both sides. Uh, there is a new policy that's in place we're going to look at live. We're going to switch over. The goal here is, is that we're going to give users a managed local replica. We can control size. We can control how much data they have. We can control how they send mail. Everything that now goes to administrator control. Um, this eliminates a lot of the problems. A lot of you are going to ask the question, what happens if they already have a local replica? We're going to cover that. Don't worry about it. You've got choices and options with what they did. The, the cool part about the local re managed replicas now is you can actually do automatic fix up. If you don't like it, you can delete and recreate it using the policy. So if the user actually has a corruption or it just isn't working, you actually delete it on the fly and recreate it. Um, you can redirect between the local as well as the local replica they used to have, the server. If it's not ready, they can use the manager, use the server. You can truncate the size. It won't automatically write emails as much as we wish it would. It won't do that one. So let's get ready to look at the live stuff. Let's take a look. So I'm looking at the administrator client. If anybody cannot see it, please let me know. Um, definitely in the sidebars. But here we have the policy for the desktop settings. There's a new tab. It's 852 required for the template for the database, as you can tell. Um, you'll have to have the new design in place for this to be seen. This is some of the new feature sets, and it always requires the new templates to be out there. What you're going to get is a choice now on the mail tab at the top of a local mail file. Now, here are the four choices, and this is where it's important. You can actually still create a local replica. Once again, you're releasing the user at that point. You don't have control. You don't have size restrictions. You can't tell what size they have on their machine. You, you basically lose management. That's the old style, so it's still there for you. But the new one is the managed replica. I can actually create on the fly for new users. I can convert what they have, or I can use that policy step I talked about a minute ago. If there's a corruption, I can actually delete the local replica or manage replica. Why do you have to make this choice? If they have nothing, the managed replica is going to make Domino perform faster and look like it performs faster. For us in the hosting world, this is what we're going to be pushing out to everybody. We've been testing it now since the betas as we're a design partner. We're going to be pushing this out to the users. The idea being that they're going to use this local managed replica first for all their transactions. So it's not a true local replica as a whole. We're not giving them their entire database. Let's say they have a 15 gig mail file. We're not, we don't, we're not going to push that data to them. We're going to give them the size restrictions we're going to set down here on the left in a few minutes. You know, how long we want it to be retained, how much mail, things like that. It's going to send instantly. It's going to use their local mail.box. And if we want to, we can actually take their current local replica and make it manage. This is where you have to make an administrative decision. A lot of users that have been trained to use local replicas will still continue to go to it as an archive. If you remove that or truncate it or change it, that can be a whole training issue or an issue for your help desk. A lot of the places are either going to push out a managed replica fresh or leave the old one there and then make the user start using the managed replica. So you get the best of both worlds in that scenario if you've already done them. If you've never done a local replica, manage is the way to go. So we'll create a managed local replica in the settings. Now, mail file location, local and on server. If you push it to local, that's presuming you have a local replica. So you're going to leave it on server. I know it sounds backwards, but I have a slide talking about it. And the last variable, how often do you want to send mail? One. There's no reason to store mail anymore. Send it as soon as they're ready. Uh, if you try to delay or set this to a higher number, you know that users will be very, very upset with you over a period of time. But this is how you actually control the managed replica. You'll notice the default settings. Remember my rule, Lotus does two things in their software, right? What you let it do, what you tell it to do. These are the defaults, so this is what you would let it do. You'd have to change these. They keep full document for 30 days. Uh, their best practice is actually, say, 180. This is totally up to you. This is the amount of mail in the managed replica that would be a full document that they have locally. Truncated documents they can still pull, 
but this is actually how much of a full documents are in there. So the 30 days default is a little bit short, I would think, for most people. You'd want to move on a little bit bigger than that. Uh, amount of free space required before it's created. If you leave it as blank, well, then no check is made. You can actually say, make sure they have so much free space. This is a good way to make sure that you don't overwhelm the user's machine with too much of local mail. The problem was before with the local replica, you couldn't see that, nor did you have control. The managed replica actually takes care of that. Rich text to receive on truncated documents. Uh, the zero is going to give you everything by default. You could set a maximum limit if you want to. The same with attachment data. Uh, you're going to get everything by default. You can set it to a maximum, meaning you could say, you know, truncate the attachment data up to a certain amount of make to speed up the process until they click on an access, then it brings it down. So then you go back to the old format, basically, right? You move into the where they're going to try to actually open the message, open the attachment, and they're going to see the slowness of the network if you truncate it. So those are the big parts of what you want to look at when you start out doing the managed replicas themselves. Uh, the safety measure and default is always the local replica. The manage is where we're going to go to for 852. We deployed the clients in the beta, we deployed the server in the beta, and I'm telling you, the performance was much better for the users. They actually never saw the difference in the change. They kept using the server copy until they were ready for the managed replica locally. So remember I said that automatic failover? They were actually using the server temporarily. Once the managed came into play, it started pushing it down in the background. The other cool part about it is you don't have to worry about this replication schedule. The managed replica kind of builds its own. So you don't have to worry about this, oh, do I need to do it for 15 minutes and the rest. Um, we didn't convert any large mail files from a local to a managed. I can tell you that. We did a couple small ones as a test. They worked great. We didn't convert any large scale ones. I can imagine there would be a delay in time plus a CPU resources that actually did the conversion. So keep that in mind if you're going to convert large local mail files. This does not affect archives. We're talking about their access to their local mail file that there is. So keep that in mind. It doesn't do that. Users did see a lag when they switched to the server copy temporarily. Uh, it was very minor, but if they're on the network usually, they wouldn't know the difference. Uh, we were streamlining implementation when we rolled this out, and the pulling of large attachments was different than the local full replica, like I just said, because you actually are bringing it all the way across the network if you're truncating them. Um, users never see anything taking place. That's the beautiful part of this you guys need to remember, is users never see anything. It's seamless to them, and they have no idea what's going on, but 852 is required for it to go. Make sure you leave it set to on server. I know it sounds backwards, but local is for local replica. You're still doing managed replicas with the on server setting. Uh, full documents, realistic, amount of free space. I showed you the default. I would say look for something that gives the user room to still do other things, mainly if you only use one drive letter for everything that you roll out to the users themselves. All right. Now, one last piece of the deployment itself. If you start seeing excess load errors on your server, more than likely, you have too many people trying to create it at one time, meaning trying to create the managed replica. So anything over 25 of the default, Lotus says performance will degrade, and we only did four to five at a time is what we were doing. So inside the server configuration document for your smart upgrade tab, it says nothing to do with smart upgrades, but it uses the governor for it. So you can throttle how many users are actually deployed at one time. It's strictly an administrative tool for you to control the deployment as it goes. So even if I set the policy and it rolled out to 1,000 users, the actual governor would then say how many people were able to actually go at one time, if that makes sense to everybody else. Hopefully it does. I want to make sure that nobody has any questions over on the side before we go in anymore, and I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to record this. It will be online for all of you to access and to replay whenever you're ready, so you'll be able to replay it uh, at your leisure. Uh, also, the GSX information is there if you want to reach them or if you said you want to talk to them, they'll be in touch. If not, please let me know. Uh, if you need more information from them, if you need to contact me, also be aware we're pushing a lot of stuff to YouTube. Uh, we're pushing a lot of the replays out there for you guys to watch um, every time these are done. And we have a special announcement. If you're not on the mailing list, let me repeat, if you are not on the mailing list, uh, we have an announcement coming up in the next probably two weeks about another big, couple small webcasts, but a really big event we're going to have going on uh, probably right after the new year in January that I want to get you guys set up to early and registered. That is another Consult in Your Pocket webcast, and we will talk to everybody shortly.